Thank you. Thank you for doing this. I'm really grateful to be here. Uh, and I'm going to talk about time. Um, this is where I spend most of my time. Uh, this is my office. Um, and uh, we do all kind of different things um, with completely different mediums. But I think one thing that connects uh, the different activities is that they are very long-term projects. Um, I just completed Works at Work, which was a five-year project, and it was completed now. Uh, I'm working on a new dance performance, which will have a premiere in two years. Uh, typefaces, which we create, are examples of something which is quite durable. Um, so, you know, the idea of working with the longer-term things is always on my mind. And I have this poster on the, on the wall, which is not just a poster, it's a calendar. It's a calendar of the uh, 21st century, and uh, it has all the days of the uh, of 100 years. And so far, I've crossed uh, 6,000 days of the 21st century to keep me you know, in the lo longer perspective. Uh, and of course, it runs until uh, you know, past the uh, due date. Um, anyway, and I've de developed this uh, interest in things which are made for longer term. This is one of my favorite artwork, which is a, a special music instrument organ made for the John Cage's performance, uh, uh, as, uh, which, is, which started in 2001. Uh, and it's supposed to run until 2,600 something, uh, where each tone is changing every couple of years. So the next one will change in 2020. Uh, it's, a some, it's a commitment to pull something like this off. Um, this is the name of my first typeface. This is not how it looked like. It looked terrible, and I'm very pleased that it doesn't exist. You know, I don't have any files, no documentation of it. Uh, and, and that's actually the best thing about it. Uh, the only clever thing about it, you know, when I was a student making this, was that it started with letter A, uh, thinking that if I'll name it with an A, people will find it more easily and uh, maybe will use it more. Uh, and also built it, of course, the double uh, the FFI ligature, thinking it's just a stroke of genius. Uh, <laughs> now, but uh, again, I'm really pleased that it's, there's no evidence of this work, as well as for my first side face is that they simply, they're so bad that uh, they need to be crossed out. But I noticed that um, there was a pattern that occurred after the first couple of typefaces. And that, uh, you know, in my wish to start naming them, you know, like, uh, alphabetically, I, I stuck to it. And I continue naming my fonts in alphabetic order. And in 20 years since I make type, you know, I got halfway. So I'm at, right now, the like, cu most current typeface is, is an O one. Uh, and it kind of it's a reminder of like a, by choosing name to where in a longer term I am at the moment. This is our latest uh, typeface, uh, which was released just two days ago, just you know like a less than 48 hours ago, you know, 39 hours ago. Uh, and uh, this typeface has not been purchased yet, uh, so there's been no orders yet. So I actually questionable to, to see if it's an actual font, because a, a font is only a font when it's used by people like you. you know, without actually being using fonts, uh, it's useless. It's a, you know, it's a collection of shapes. Uh, fonts are only useful, you know, like a, they're, they're semi-products. They need to be completed by people like you. Uh, so I, would, I probably would say that this is not a font yet. It's waiting to be font when it's be, being used. But I'm showing it as a, OK, so uh, it hasn't been used, uh, it's a kind of just collection of shapes. Um, and normally, you know, there's quite a bit of work leading to it. I think we worked on about 18 months uh, together with Nicola, my, my partner, Nicola Jurek, uh, to, to make this off, uh, to complete it. And, uh, you know, when you work on such a long project and you finally finish it, uh, there's a lot of expectations. You know, what will do people with this? Will they use it or not? Um, and uh, when we have people from outside publishing, when we, when we publish other people's fonts, they very good, they get very impatient. They want to, you know, they call me day after, like, so did anyone buy the fonts? What's the response? And uh, of course, you get your likes and uh, retweets on the Facebook or, and Twitter, but uh, th this doesn't really count for, for the fonts. It actually has to be, you know, purchased and used. Um, so people get very nervous. Somehow, with this typeface, which hasn't been used yet, I'm not that nervous yet because, um, because we've been doing this for a while. So even when there are no orders, I know that this is fine. Why? Because we've been doing this. Uh, this is my well, it's kind of first serious typeface. This is one of our best sellers uh, that, that I designed in 2001, so 17 years ago. 
And the first order came after 55 days, so after two months of being on the market. Actually, it was the only order in the first year. It was only one order in the first year. Uh, so again, you put so much work in it, and then I think we earned $200 in the, f in the first year. Is it me? No. <laughs> um, if I look at this chart, uh, this is Fedra Sands and how it has done over time. Uh, it has done pretty well. It, it, as I said, it's one of our best sellers. Uh, and it took 11 years uh, for this typeface to, to, to reach its commercial uh, potential, to, to reach its peak. 11 years, so it's a kind of long, longer term. And coming back to people who you know, publish typefaces for the first time or, or you know, like a, you know, having less experience, it is difficult to kind of get this perspective. Imagine that you're making an informed decision after first year. After first year, imagine like a, when, when there are no orders and you think like a, something's on the right, uh, but the typeface is completed, so you cannot redesign it. So the only thing that people can't think of changing is the price tag. So th they would discount it in, ho in hope that it will be used more often. And uh, that may be an unfortunate uh, decision because uh, you basically, you know, you, you devalue a product before, you know, it can actually reach its uh, potential. Uh, and uh, people don't realize that, uh, you know, it's a, this is a longer term game and a short term uh, aims are not really relevant for, for your longer term uh, perspective. This typeface hopefully will be used for, for years to come. Uh, so discounting is, may not be the best thing to do. Again, uh, we have actually data to, to document this, why this may not be a good thing. You know, we, we, we don't do, uh, we, d we don't discount fonts. Uh, we can't stick to the price and trying to be like this, you know, gardener. You, know, just, you create the right conditions and you wait and you hope that by watering your plants and uh, by giving attention to your seeds, good things will happen. So Fedra Sands is another example. Uh, published in 2003, first order came three uh, or four months after it has been published. Um, and uh, it has been you know, used and accepted uh, and it reaches you know, peak seven years after publication. Another typeface, Greta, Greta Text, it's a newspaper typeface. And again, worst newspaper typefaces need a bit more time. Uh, the first order came after half a year. Uh, so we too, you know, you shouldn't worry too quickly about things. And, uh, uh, and since then, you know, again, it took seven years to reach its peak. It kept uh, pretty stable after, afterwards. You can only kind of show this when you have sufficient data, and uh, we're lucky enough that you know I can observe it. This is actually number of units sold. It's not the, the revenue. It's just, which is probably the more uh, better way to compare. A uh, lava, a uh, text font. Uh, first order came surprisingly quickly to our standards. This is like a rocket tempo, 23 days, and then we had the first order, uh, and um, probably not enough uh, time to tell if it reached its uh, peak or not. Uh, so it's been five years, and it's still kind of growing. Um, recently, there has been discussions about, uh, and this is Chris Sowers' blog post about what is a typeface, and he's arguing that typeface is not a tool, and his conclusion is that typeface is a typeface. Something that I agree with, typeface is indeed a typeface. Uh, something hard to disagree. But I also think that typefaces are tools. Some typefaces are tools. And other typefaces are something else. You know, they can be even fashion accessories. Uh, they can be, they're all different kind of fonts made for different purposes and they behave differently. And probably the best thing to, uh, to compare are text and display fonts. Uh, text and display fonts are completely, thank you, Complete diff two different things, you know, which have a diff they're different type of products. Um, and uh, if I look, uh, if I look at same kind of charts and data, cont which are display fonts, you will see why. So this is a Climax font by uh, Andre Yop, uh, talented designer, uh, whose typeface we are fortunate to enough to publish it. And you know, we've seen that uh, it takes time for us to, you know, to, for the fonts to be uh, established and used. For, cl for Climax, it was only four hours before first order came in. Uh, and it reached its peak very, very quickly you know, in the first year. But then it went slowly down. So it just, it's completely reverse uh, chart than, than, to, than to display fonts. So it's the same foundry, same. I, I don't doubt the quality of the product. It's just it's a, you know, aimed at a completely different use. Another example, Karloff uh, um, display typeface published uh, not so long time ago. 
uh, first order came within an hour, uh, which is again, uh, for us, it's uh, unprecedented. Um, uh, and then slowly it went down since then, because uh, again, it's a completely different typeface than, uh, than if you have like a dysfunctional uh, you know, text fonts that we do. Um, a more recent typeface of ours is in November, which is a fairly new one, published only in 2016. And first order came quickly uh, for our standards. Uh, and there's not enough data to talk about, you know, like, uh, acceptance and use of this typeface. Uh, but if I look at, uh, you know, typefaces which I've shown you until now, which is now the base of our collection, there's a few things that you can tell. First is that the, um, these typefaces stay and you be, continue being useful for a longer period of time, which is great. It's a great investment for users. Uh, I think that's hopefully justifies or explains you know, the, the, the costs. Um, and this, another thing I can tell about this chart is that uh, if you look at the, the, the blue bit, which is the last typeface, it has completely different curve curve than, than the previous typefaces. And I, I've seen it with other recently published typefaces in our collection that the, the growth in the last two years is a different one than, than in the first years. It has to do with number of clients we have, but also it has to do, I think, with one thing, and uh, what has been mentioned, with, with FontStand. I don't know if you guys you know what FontStand is. FontStand is this application started by type designers that, uh, that allows testing things right away. A lot of foundries use it that the, they coordinate their releases, and uh, the day when they release the typeface, they put it on FontStand so people can try it for free legally, uh, or they can rent it. Um, and of course, it's kind of win-win-win situation model because it's, a, uh, it's great for the users to be able to test it, to test drive. Uh, it's great for uh, the found type foundry because you get re extra re revenue from rentals. But for us, for the type foundry, the best thing is that, that people can actually get their hands on what we're doing. You know, if you're selling an expensive product like an expensive typeface or expensive car, you would need a test drive. Uh, without it, it's hard to explain like, why something is you know, worth for work its money. So November, which was launched this uh, day and a half, two days ago, uh, it doesn't have any orders, but I checked this morning, and uh, in 24 hours, there's been 14 people trying it. Uh, um, and I think that's a great thing, because again, when people try it, uh, in our statistics, every sixth person trying it usually ends up renting it or buying it from the foundry. Um, so I, I, I would want, the more people try, the better. Um, and that's why I'm kind of optimistic about, I see, optimistic about, um, about, the, about the future of this font. And I'm not nervous that even when there are no orders, that it will be used eventually. Let's have a look at the, you know, like a, the lifespan of typefaces. And the, uh, I looked at the random selection, I, uh, at the you know, uh, selection of best selling typefaces at my fonts, which is a good sort of overview of, you know, a picture of 2018 of uh, how is it doing, and uh, uh, you'll see that. Um, well, first you see that uh, Adrian Frutiger's work is extremely popular still, which is a great thing. Okay. Uh, you also see that they're, they're all sans serif fonts, uh, which is probably understandable and probably again a snapshot of the time. Um, you also notice that uh, most of the people uh, on that list are no longer alive uh, because. Uh, you know, the first year is the first the year of the original design, and second is kind of the remastering and the particular version. Uh, so um, it's a lot of dead people on the list. Uh, and actually, the, the average age of a typeface is slightly older, older than I am, um, which is, uh, well, I think it's a probably a great thing, because you see that the typefaces continue being valuable even when the authors are not alive. Uh, uh, you know, like a, it's hard to imagine any other product which is useful after so long, such a long time after being made. Uh, so I think typefaces in this sense are unique. Um, of course, we cannot generalize. I, I looked at the other uh, list of fonts, and on FontStand, for example, and uh, it's a completely different list. Uh, probably had to do with the fact that, first, it's more diverse. You know, there, there's a lot of, some, a lot of serif fonts. Uh, they actually fonts made by women, which wasn't the case in the first one. And uh, these, all these people are alive and doing well, people who make, design them. So, um, you know, when people buy and use these fonts, 
actually the money goes back to them and allows them to do more of the work and it actually stimulates the whole, whole field of uh, type design. And the every, average age of a typeface on font stand of the best selling typeface is just three and a half years old. So it's a completely different thing. So you need to probably interpolate between the two things to get a better picture of the, of the whole market. Uh, um, I became interested to see, you know, like how to document this or how, you know, design or every design decision we make uh, doesn't exist in a vacuum. Uh, you know, there's no such thing as a timeless design. You know, every time we make a design decision, it is depending on its context, on its uh, time, uh, and inevitably it carries some decisions or uh, it, being, it can be identified as a you know, decision made in a certain period. I tried to look at this, some other product which is mainly about functionality and performance, uh, but also contains a lot of aesthetical decisions. And I think the closest I could find out was probably car design. So if you look at the you know, iconic cars uh, from the 60s, I think you know, uh, they, they're beautiful, but they are uh, pictures of the 60s. So this would be you know, the beautiful Citroën DS, uh, and uh, this is uh, you know, the 70s uh, pictures. And you know, these shapes, uh, if you look at them, they are extremely simple shapes. All these cars, they're trying to be fast and functional and, and uh, utilitarian, uh, at the same time well designed. And from the simple shapes that where every car is trying to be aerodynamic, uh, you can also see some decisions, and you can see how, how the curves age over time, that uh, you identify some things as you know, being you know, rooted in certain periods. So if you look backwards, if, you know, I imagine 50 years from now, if you look at this Tesla, we'll see, wow, well, this is such an example of a uh, semi-18, uh, you know, just based on you know, the curves that we see. Uh, again, it's very simple things. The, the cars evolve actually you know, the, the very little, but we can still identify the, you know, the, the design elements which are, which are there. But with type design, it's a strange thing that you, you know, uh, type design seems to be a little uh, different from the rest. Here's a design brief uh, I received uh, a few years back. I, res I, I got a design project, which was a dream project, but also impossible one. Completely paradoxical one, one that I could not just you know, I could fulfill is to make something then, you know, four, years, four years ago, but something that should be relevant and look fresh 20 years later. Uh, and when you look at these cars, you see that a you know, car which is five years old looks like a car which is five years old. It cannot look like a new car. But type design, like when we looked at this uh, example of best selling typefaces and uh, how things are established, they're slightly more immune to time. This, they tend to age better because they're such elementary shapes, because they are uh, you know, you know, driven by you know, human, human physiology and, and ergonomy, and our eyes have not changed. So because they're so simple shapes, I think it's probably one of the rare disciplines where possibly you could try doing this. I'm not saying that you, would that it's, that you can make a timeless, timeless typeface, but uh, I think if we can give a shot, maybe type design is a solution. So I was asked to make a typeface for uh, Paris Underground, Paris Metro, a project, a large project in France, project of the century, uh, where 70 or maybe 80 stations are being built uh, deeper under existing underground, um, something that should be completed you know, 20 years from now, if things go well, which r things rarely do work out well in France. Um, or anywhere else, like a large scale projects. Um, it's a project uh, I've been working on together with Parisian studio Antegrado Rudy Bohr. Rudy Bohr is the person uh, here. Uh, and this is Denis Cuagno, another person that I'm working with. Um, and I don't have time to go into specifics of decisions that we've, we've been going to because uh, uh, it would be a lecture on its own. Um, but, uh, and there's been many failures and many things that we tried and never used. Uh, but this, these are some of the sketches that, uh, you know, how far we got. Uh, developing uh, orientation system for the new uh, system uh, designing typefaces, designing multilingual signage uh, for Paris of the future, when most of the tourists will come from, you know, Asia and Middle East, and uh, uh, and the German and Spanish have been replaced for Arabic and Chinese and uh, and Japanese. Um, some examples, 
And I don't know what the time will bring, but I already marked my calendar about when this type is, should be released. Thank you.